Hello, my friends. This is Shelly from Coal and It's a Nax. Thank you so much for clicking on this tutorial. Um, I'm so glad you joined me. You are going to love this blanket. It is made with flat panels, so it's a thinner blanket than um, most of the blankets we see on or that we make or from my channel, anyways, are. Um, made with tubes and so they're double thickness but this is made with a flat panel so you're going to get practice with that technique as well which is so much fun don't be scared of it <laughs> it's uh it's fun and we're going to um we're going to make this with facets loops and threads facets yarn in the color slate so absolutely beautiful now this yarn is so soft you're going to absolutely love it our machines love it it works you're going to see it works so so well in the machine. Now, I only bought four balls of yarn thinking that I need, needed four just for the tubes, but um, later on in the video, you'll see where I was able to get the fifth ball <laughs> um, because we need it for the border and for the fringe. Um, so you're going to need five balls of this yarn, um, but you know what? Uh, Michael's has it at a very, I don't know where you're going to get it from, but Michael sells it for $7.99. Um, they had a 25% off sale, and then I also got it um, for... 10% uh, off of that because I'm a senior. 55 plus at Michael's is a senior. So um, it really wasn't a bad price for five balls. You get this beautiful, beautiful throw blanket that matches, you know, you pick a color that matches your decor and it, it will um, just look great in your living room or your sunroom or wherever you choose to put it over the edge of a bed. Um, wonderful little throw. It measures 45. 45 inches by 54 inches. So to me, that's the perfect size to just throw over my body when I just want to just get something a little extra for warmth. And it's just um, the thinness of it. It's, it's beautiful. I can't say enough about it. So I hope that you love it. Grab yourself some yarn, get your 46 needle machine. Um, if you have only 48 central, that's fine too. It'll work perfect. And let's get um, started on this beautiful, beautiful blanket. For this project, we're going to need to use waste yarn. So I'm going to grab one that's in a contrasting color to my work. So this is a dark green. Um, you're going to rotate your machine so that your your black needles are, are to on this side. And I've got my white ones here. And I'm going to, once I have the white ones in front of the yarn feeder there, then I can flip up to flat panel from circular. Then when I go back, I can only go that far, okay? So then we're going to take our first white needle. We're going to go behind that and in front, behind and in front until we get all 43 needles. Now this machine has 46 needles, but because we are doing a flat panel, we need the three black needles for turning. So we can only cast on 43 needles, okay? So we're going to go in front and behind all the way around until we get to this last one and it's behind underneath that little nook then you're going to take it and you're going to put it underneath that divider okay and then into your yarn guide just like that then you're going to go as far to this this direction as you can okay and then you're going to back it up and go the other way and when you back up and go the other way this need these three needles have lined this up so that it's over top of that divider. This is the first needle that's going to work. We want it to um, be over top of that divider, and the the working yarn is over the two red needles, the red teeth there. Then that needle is going to pick it up, bring it down, and work it. And we're going to continue around until we get to the beginning again. Okay. Just like that, and you're going to keep going until you can't go anymore. And then you're going to back it up again. Now, what I do is when I'm at this first needle and um, when I'm working the first needle on the other side too, I put some tension on the back of it here. Just so I've got, a, it's a little tighter here than, than the rest of the row. Because um, by putting a little bit of tension on that, I'm assuring that it's going to get underneath that nook of that needle. Then I'm looking to see, make sure that that um, stitch from the previous row is over those two red teeth. Then it's going to pop down over this divider. That needle's going to pick it up. Then I'm going to just tighten it just a very little bit so that I have a very nice edge down my piece, okay? I'm going to go to the next side, okay? Make sure that that loop is over those two red teeth. I'm going to go as far as I can go. Now, um, it takes these three needles to turn, but this first one's the only one that actually takes it down, but it brings it back up. It's just putting it in, in line so that it can pass over top of that divider making sure the loop is over the two little red teeth. 
I'm going to put some tension on it. Then when it pops down, look at that little loop right there. I'm going to just tighten that up just a little bit so that I have a very nice edge. Then I'm going to keep going. Okay, just like this. Pop that down over those red teeth. Sometimes the first and the last needle needs your help. <laughs> then we're going to put a little bit of tension. Watch it pop down over that divider. Then tighten it just a little bit. Then let off on your tension and keep going. Okay. Push that down over the red teeth, over the divider. Can't turn it, go any further. Come back. Little bit of tension. Needle picks it up. Little tension. Then you're going to go back. Okay, make sure that that goes down over the red teeth. With with the working yarn, this working yarn that we've, we've got is so beautiful. Um, seriously, when you're using it, you'll realize you don't have to really put it down. You don't have to keep pushing it with your thumb on the first and the last um, needle to get that loop over the red teeth. It just automatically happens because the, the machine loves the yarn so much. Okay, I'm going to do two more rows. Just in the same way. But with this more coarser yarn, you have to make sure that, that um, the loop is down over the two little red needles on the last and the first needle, okay? All right, so as we come up on our last row of waist yarn, before we get to the end, we're going to set our counter to zero, okay? So you go ahead and set that to zero. And we'll get to the end. I did a few more rows because I forgot to tell you to set it to zero. So I just added my yarn again. That's why you see these pieces. So just ignore that. Um, but it's important to set your counter to zero um, before you get to the end here. Because as soon as it hit th this black needle is in line with this yarn feeder, it, it changes the row counter. So it changed to one now. And I'm ready to begin my project. So I'm going to cut that yarn. I'm going to put it in the middle there. I'm going to take my working yarn, put it in my feeder shut the yarn guide. I'm going to put it underneath, just hold it underneath um, this little divider here with your hand, with your finger, so that when you work it, it's going to pop down over that just like it normally does, like it did with the waist yarn. But because I set my counter, I'm already on row one, okay? So I like to know the rows, the row that I'm working on, not the row that I'm finished. So as I work this row, I'm going to just give this a little tie, as I work this row, it says one, so I know that this is row one. I'm gonna keep going just like this till I get to the end. We're going to do the same thing that we did with our waist yarn, making sure that drops down. As Soon as this black needle gets in line with the yarn guide, it changes to two. So I'm gonna keep going till I can't go any further. Then I'm going to watch as it goes down there, put a little tension on it as that needle picks it up. Then just a slight little tug and I'm gonna go back the other way. And now it's telling me I'm on row two. Okay, so now I'm at the end again. I, as soon as that black needle comes, it's going to say row three, but I'm going to, oops, got a knot in my working yarn here. I'm going to keep going past that. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it. It turned to, row, it turned to three, so now I know I'm on row three. A little bit of tension as it goes over that guide, that divider. That needle will pick it up and I'll tug on it just a little bit and that's gonna give me a nice straight edge all the way down my side. And I'm gonna keep going just like that until I have 230 rows. So we're doing the same thing on the ends that we did with our waist yarn um, and how I showed you with our working yarn and you're gonna find that this working yarn works like butter in your machine. It's gonna pick it up. You're gonna hardly have to think about it as you do it. So keep going till you get to row 230. And uh, when I get partway, there, I'm going to step back on and show you where I'm at, okay? So I just thought I'd pop on and show you how wonderfully my machine is working. And you know what? This is my actual third panel that I've done, and I'm doing four. And I haven't tucked one stitch. This yarn is so beautiful in the machine. And... Usually with, like, this isn't, like, it's a four-weight yarn, but it sure certainly doesn't feel like it. It's probably because it's got those little silver flecks in it. But usually um, you have to really, really watch the end two needles to make sure that that loop pops down over the red and that uh, it picks up the yarn. And then when you come back, that it pops back down over the two red teeth. But with this yarn, 
you don't really have to even hardly watch it because it automatically pops down. Like it just works like beautifully. You're gonna love it. Okay, so see how I'm doing? So when I start my first needle on each row, I put a little bit of tension on it. Um, just, I just pick up, you can't see my fingers because they're behind the guide, but I just pull on that yarn just a little bit to tighten it right there. So when that needle picks it up, then I pull it just ever so slightly again, just so that I have a very nice edging. I'll do it again on this side, okay? You don't need to see my hand for me to explain it. So I'm going to come back. Now I'm, I lift, I put my hand closer to the, to the top of the yarn that's at the back there, and I'm going to pull it. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of tension right there. And then when that needle finishes knitting, I'm going to give it a little bit more tension, just very slightly. And that will give you a beautiful, beautiful edging. Like, look at how beautiful that is. I might say it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so that's because I'm doing what I just showed you how to do. Okay, so you keep going um, till you get 230 rows, okay? Um, I have a little hole in my table there. Um, I generally have my smaller Addy on this side of the table. And... Uh, and because you can't roll up in a, uh, a two very easily with small Addy, so I made a little hole, but I've been using it for the big Addy as well, and it's it's really great. I'm, so if you have a table that you're able to make, to drill a hole into it, um, go ahead and do that as well, and you won't regret it. But actually, the real reason why I popped on this really um, for this section was to tell you that um, in my last video, I shared with you that I took a piece of tin foil, just regular tin foil that you use for cooking, and I took a piece and I, I folded it and folded it and folded it and folded it until I got a really thick piece. Then I cut it the size of that. You know the, the little piece that goes over your handle that looks like this? It's it's like a half circle. I cut this, the piece so that it fit exactly underneath there. I didn't go up higher on the sides where the screws go, but just so it's there. Um, and it fits snugly over the over the um, handle of the of the gear like the the bar you've got your gear on the end and it's got that that long piece that comes out um then that little thing goes over top to hold to hold your to hold your handle in place i put the tin foil right underneath this little piece right underneath there um so it was really snug tight against the handle i put um uh silicone grease or lithium grease white lithium grease is what i use um on both sides of the, of the tin foil and then I screwed down that whole piece, um, as you're supposed to do, and it tightened my handle. You, there is no move in my handle, like there's none. You know how generally you can wiggle it and there's um, lots of wiggle room? There is none in my handle. And it is knitting. Look like you can, I've done a lot of rows and you've seen how beautiful it is, okay? So you might wanna try that, okay? Um, I may, next time I take my machine apart, I, I'll do a, a video on it but I think I explained it well enough so that you can you can get it okay so I'm gonna probably try and say that in a lot of my videos um, just so that you know it gets out there and that people um, get the little technique there that really really makes a difference like look at this my machine really honestly has never worked better so keep going till you get a hundred two hundred and thirty rows and then I'll see you back on my last row so this is 230 I'm going to go all the way till it won't go anymore then I'm going to cut off my end open the latch feed it back to behind that or in front of or down to where that last white needle is okay and then I'm going to take my waist yarn I'm going to open my feeder. I'm gonna put it between that last black and that first white right there, okay? But I wanna hold it onto the side of that little divider um, on the right of it, of this needle, my right of this needle, so that um, it can work properly as it goes over this divider, that needle picks it up, okay? And we're just going to knit. If you're using a different yarn, just do the first row quite slow so that you make sure that every needle picks it up and it works it. Okay. And I'm gonna go back, making sure that that green yarn dropped down over those two little red needles. 
And I'm gonna go back. Get some slack on my ball. Okay, make sure those drop down. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit um, about eight rows. Okay, always ending up on that other side. Oh, look at this, this uh, yarn came with some, some extra. So I'm gonna just pull that off. There we go, whatever that was, okay. And keep going until I get eight rows of waist yarn, however many you're comfortable with, and then I'll see you back. I'm back at the beginning. I'm going to cut my waist yarn, open my latch, go the other direction, feed that down, and then we're going to go in this direction once, and then back. And sometimes that last needle will not unhook itself. So you're just gonna give it some help, okay? And we're going to remove our project. Okay, just like that. And there we go. We have our beautiful piece. We're going to make four of those, okay? So each ball of yarn will make about 230 rows. Um, well, it'll make a little bit more than 230 rows. However, one of the balls that I had, see this is what's left in this ball. One of the balls I had only made 124 rows, so then I just used this excess and, uh, and finished it off, and, and uh, it worked out that I'm able to get um, four panels from four balls, one panel on each ball, 230 rows. So you won't wanna go in, uh, much bigger than that unless you buy more yarn, okay? So now that we have that um, done, go ahead, like I said, and make four panels, and then we're going to uh, close them off. All right, so I mentioned um, in the previous clip, and, and I think several times in the video, that um, I needed four balls of yarn for four panels. Now, what I didn't tell you, and I mentioned it at the begin, be, beginning of the video um, before we got the project started, that that you're actually going to need more than four balls. You're going to need to be have five balls because we need an extra, we need more yarn to sew up the ends and the side. For me, I, um, I never calculated that, and I only have four, well, it, I only had four balls of yarn and I'm not going to make it to the city anytime soon. So um, I'm going to use, I have these little balls, mini yarn. It's perfect weight for this. I'm going to have the perfect color. I'm going to use this to sew up the side seams. I have enough of this to sew up um, the end of the panels here, um, but I'll need to use this to sew up the side seams. Um, so you're going to need a fifth ball of yarn um, to do the seaming or... Um, like I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, you'll do less rows, um, maybe 115 or 120 rows. So you have that extra yarn to use for sewing, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our panels now and we're going to close them. So we're going to put our bobby pin, um, Take this This is the end of our project because it's unraveling um, easily. We're going to have it so that the right side is facing you so that when we do our, our slip stitches, we're gonna do them with this side facing so that they're in the right, um, the right side when when we take the waist yarn off the s slip stitches are facing in the right direction okay so we're going to so the right part of this the right side of the slip stitch is with the right side of the work is what i'm trying to say so take a look at at your um waist yarn and it's coming out there and it's coming out the last loop which is also um attached to this piece of working yarn here okay so put your bobby pin in there and then you're going to count 43 and and the reason why i count them is because um you don't want to miss one because if you miss one yeah that row is going to unravel so the end ones are hard to find at times so i'm going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten fifteen sixteen all the way to 43. okay so i am going to zoom in because this is 42 and if you don't put stitch markers you would have stopped probably stopped there so now you're gonna go up to this very top loop that's right there and that's 43 okay so otherwise if you don't mark them you will very easily miss one so now we're gonna go back over to this first one here we're going to get our crochet hook and I'm going to use a 4.0 millimeter hook I'm going to unzoom this <laughs> I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and then I'm going to go into that first loop where my first stitch marker is. I'm going to go into there. 
I'm going to yarn over and pull that through that loop. Then I'm going to pull it through the loop that's on my hook to join. That's a slip stitch to join, okay? So that's one. We've worked one stitch. Now we're going to go into the next one. Yarn over, pull it through that loop, then pull it through the loop on your hook. That's a slip stitch. We want to make these slip stitches loose, okay? So I'm going to go into this next one, yarn over, pull it up, then through the loop on my hook with very little tension, okay? Because I don't want to tighten my ends. I just want them to flow loosely. So when you pull that through the one on the hook, lift it up just a little bit, okay? Just so you have some extra room there. And you're going to go through all of them just like that until you get to the end. And when you get to the end, I will meet you back. So nice and loose, just so that it flows evenly, just like that, okay? And it's not it's not pulling your work in, okay? We want it to be to have the nice width to our panel, okay? So go ahead, and when you get to the last one, I will meet you there. Okay, so I'm going to um, go into this one here. And then into this one, I'm going to pull up on my bobby pin so I can get under it. And then when I finish doing all my slip stitches, I'm going to yarn over, pull through that last loop and tie off. Now this is the easy end. This end, you just pull off your waist yarn, just like so. Okay, so go ahead, remove your waist yarn. And then we are going to go to the other side. Before I go to the other side, I'll just show you that's a beautiful edge. And that's what I meant by um, doing it with the right side facing up. Because then when you're laying this flat, you see that that nice right, the right side of the stitch is, is up as well. So it's just beautiful that way. All right, so I'm turning this over so that the wrong side is facing just so that I can find the stitches, okay? So when you take your, your waist yarn and your working yarn... They're, they're both right there, but there is a stitch that's just, it's not looking like a stitch, but it is a stitch. It's its what's trails off from, from this uh, yarn right there. So we're going to put a stitch marker right in there. Okay, then I'm going to count that as one, and I'm going to count down 43. So one, two, three, four, and I'll meet you back. And there we go. My 43rd one is fairly obvious on this side, okay? It's that very last stitch that you see. So again, very, very important to count. Make sure you have 43. So again, you can start from here and then double check, count back till you get to 43. And it's always one stitch that doesn't look like a stitch that actually is a stitch. And that's this one right here, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to turn this so that it's facing, right side facing. We're going to grab our yarn that we're going to sew with. This is my last piece that I have left. I'm gonna put a slip knot on my hook. And I'm going to right side facing, tip this over, pull up that stitch marker, put my yarn end under that, take those both to the back. Then I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull it through that loop and through the loop on my hook. That's a slip stitch to join. Now I can take out that bobby pin. And then that counts as one. I'm going to go into the next one. two, keeping it loose, that's three, four, and I'm going to do this all the way down till I get to 43, and when I get to 43, I'm going to yarn over and fasten off just like I did before, and um, then I'll come back and I'll show you how to remove this nasty waste yarn. <laughs> Um, cause this is the one that's at the beginning of the project and, um, there's a simple way to remove it on a, on, on a tube that we do, but to, to remove it on a flat panel, I have yet to find an easy way. I think what we've got to do is, is, um, 
our last row of waste yarn, just one row, put a different color in. Then you can pull that out. We've done that with our tubes before, and that's one way of removing the waste yarn from the first row. If, you, um, if you've done that, you know what I, what I mean. Um, but that way, if we would have just added one row, I wonder if it would have worked on the flat panel as well. Because then all you got to do is, is pull that one row out and then this whole thing comes off. But on a flat panel, the edges knit differently. Um, the last in the first stitch knit differently and it catches the yarn in a different way. So um, I'm, I have yet to try it and see if it works. So, um, so I haven't done it for this particular video. So it will be a little bit um, different in taking it off. But I've, I have watched other people do it, do it with their flat panels and do it the way I'm going to show you. And so we're going to just cross our fingers and hope it works. Okay. If not, well, we cut it off, but I'm sure it's going to work. So let's keep going. I'm going to talk to you almost till I'm done at the end here now anyways, but I'm just going to keep finishing it off and then I'll see you right back. Okay, my friends. Okay. So that's done. Now we are going to remove this nasty waste yarn. Now we have to first loosen it from here. So pull up on that first loop, just like what you just saw me do. Okay. And then pull that out. And let's see if I have to do that again. And where does that trail? I'm going to do that one more time. So just follow the, the end up until it, so you can un, this is the third time, just so we can get it started here. Let me see. A loom pick works wonderful for this. And pull that out again. That's four, five. Now I can, I did it five times. Now I can roll up my first row, pinch this, pinch the stitch, pull it out. Just have to unknot it first, okay? Then roll it up, pinch the stitch, and take out that first row. Okay? Roll it up. Pinch the stitch, take out that first row. I'm going to do that all the way down. And then generally when you get to the end of the first row on a tube, then you can unwind it. Um, it's not so, so simple with a flat panel and you'll see what I mean in one second, okay? But we're going to just make it to the end here. Roll it up, pinch the stitch, pull it out. almost to the end just like that and then we see that we have another little knot because it does that when it turns the corner so you can either unknot it on every row if you can find it like that and then work your way down I'm gonna pull this out I could even even just cut that off okay but now all you have to do is just pull up on each row okay just like this then grab the next row and pull it up grab the next row and pull it up just like that until you get to the last row now this is the only way that i have figured it out um I've seen a couple people do it this way, and it's it's the only thing that I have figured to this point. Um, but I think if I did just one row of extra waste yarn, of different waste yarn, uh, before I started my, my um, working yarn, then we could just pull that one out from the side and it would work. But this is a hot mess, but it still wasn't that hard to take out, was it? And then we'll just cut it off. And this waste yarn is not reusable, of course. But... I think that is the only way to, that. Uh, well, that's the way that I know how to do it now, okay? And and I know I apologize to some of you um, people who have done this a lot more than I have who are looking at me and saying, oh, Shelly, what are you doing? <laughs> I wish that I could uh, come into your living room and you could show me the right way. Um, but I couldn't find any better videos on it that taught me how to do it, so that's how I'm doing it for now. The next time again, that I do a flat panel, I'm going to try it with just the last row of waste yarn, just one um, row of a different color. Um, so then I would think that I would just pull it out the end and the rest would come off. I'm going to try that. But now we've got um, all of our ends sewn and we are ready to sew our panels together. So we're going to need to grab two panels, okay? So I'm going to grab this one and one more and then I'll see you back. 
So here's where I'm going to use this little mini yarn that I got at Dollarama. Um, I think it's going to be perfect because the color will blend beautifully. And uh, it's just a nice thin yarn that I think is going to... Um, to work very well for this project. So I'm going to take enough that I think is long enough for the tube. Then I'm going to yarn it on, put it onto my needle, thread my needle, and then we're going to mattress stitch these together. So I'm going to take this panel here with the right side facing me. I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to put the right sides together. Okay. So this is the right side. This is the right side. I'm going to put them together. And I'm going to come up to the top here. And I'm going to find my rows where the first, if I go to the very edge there, I can see that the wide part of my V, the wide part of the stitch is going to the left and the point is at the top. That's what I want. So if on this side, it's not at the very, very edge, I have to just rotate it a half a stitch because I don't think it's going to be. No, the point is down. I'm going to rotate it just a half a row so that I have the wide part of the stitch going down. You can see that right there. Okay, I'm gonna put these two panels together. This is gonna take a bit of patience, my friends, but we got this. Okay, then I see that this is my first stitch. I'm gonna go up and into two stitches, just like we do the mattress stitch, I'm gonna pull up two bars. Okay, then I'm gonna go over to the next one Put my needle into that stitch, pull up two bars, just like that. I hope this yarn's not too thin, but if it is, then I will change it out with another one. But still the process is the same, so I'll show you with this. I think it's going to be fine though, okay? Then I'm going to just lightly fold that up, okay? So I'm following the same row. I'm going to go where in where I came out, which is right there. I'm going to pick up two bars. So two stitches, go across two stitches, pull through. I'm gonna go in where I came out here. You can see where I came out there following the same row, the wide part of the stitches to the left. And I'm gonna pick up two stitches right there. Okay. Slowly unroll that. You can see where I'm coming out right there. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pick up two bars. I'm going to do this all the way down this panel. Then I'm going to take two more panels and I'm going to do the same thing to those two panels. Not attaching the four. I'm going to make two separate pieces that are two panels each. Okay, so we're going to do that one. Go into here, pick up two bars. I'll do a little bit more here and then I can tighten it off with you. Then you can gently roll it up. It's not as hard as it actually looks. Okay, go in, pick up two bars. Then in where I came out, pick up two bars. I've done 230 rows on each panel, so it is going to it's going to match up in the end. Okay, maybe I stretched them out differently because um, you stretch them out widthwise and lengthwise when you take them off the machine or before you do this process. Um, you can block them if you feel you need to. Um, I'm going to sew them together and then if I feel I need to block it, I'm going to block it after. Okay. And then I'm just going to continue this process all the way down till the end, but I'm trying to get a chunk here done so that I can show you how I tighten it. Okay. Just like this. And if you've seen any of my other videos where I've made a blanket or anything, you know exactly what to do. Okay, so I'm going to pinch the top, or actually I'm going to take the, the end, um, because I'm close enough that I can. I'm going to just pull it. And look how beautiful that comes together. It's a beautiful, beautiful seam. And I'm going to keep going all the way down just like that. And so the next time, I'll go down maybe 10 or 15, um, 16 stitches however long you want to do it, then you'll pinch here and you'll pull on your working yarn at, at the top here, or you can grab down the bottom here for quite some distance and pull them both um, like that and it'll just bring it together beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do that all the way down my panel, my two panels here, till I get them together, um, sewn together, and then from there I'm going to take my next two panels, I'm going to do the exact same thing, 
um, and then we'll end up with two wide panels and when we have those two wide panels made then we will move on to the next part of our our project okay so have fun my friends grab yourself a coffee a little snack and enjoy the process okay i'll see you in a little bit Okay, so I'm almost at the end here. Just got a few more to do. And it's looking really, really good, okay? This is um, a long panel to have to work up, but you know what? Sit and put your favorite music on or your favorite TV program or, um, you know, a podcast or whatever you have that you like and you'll be surprised how fast you'll actually get through this uh, it, it worked out not not too bad it didn't take me too long to do a panel um, this is my second one almost done I'm gonna just go right up into that very tip there and then from here I'm gonna do the same thing I already hid all my ends um, once I once I showed you how to do this, I went back and I hit all my my other ends before I started this because I, I hate working around ends. I like to fill them in as I go um, and get them get them all out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to close up this end just like this with my with my yarn. Okay, so it's nice and even. One more knot will do it. Just like that. And then I'm going to just hide this down into the seam. And back up cut it off and there you have it okay so we have done and you know what with this yarn you can't match up that you really can't match up the the um the colors to to be even it just it just doesn't work because of the way it's distributed some are some are wider some are thinner um the same color and uh you just have to let it flow the way it flows and i absolutely love it i particularly love this cornflower blue i think it looks just cornflower blue with with taupe is absolutely gorgeous together so we have a beautiful seam on the outside and i'm going to show you the inside in one second here we have it we have a beautiful seam down the inside and it's just so soft. I really think I might use thin yarn like this. I don't know. This is, again, this is what I, what I used. It's a mini yarn. The ball is upstairs. Um, but I got it at the Dollarama and there was like six or eight colors in there. I might use that every time I want to do a join instead of the yarn because it makes a, it, it, lessens the bulk of your seam and i just think like it works like a charm it's beautiful and i also called michael's <laughs> and they had one ball left in this color so um my husband was in the area on work and he stopped and picked it up and i'm so excited because um you're gonna need five balls because i'm gonna put a fringe on this and i need the yarn for the fringe so um i've been talking about four balls and it you know throughout this video and it takes one ball per Per panel um, but you're gonna need one for sewing up and for um, you know any extras that you want to do like the fringe okay so go ahead and um, complete that now we're going to move on to the next set section I just I love it I just am so pleased with how it were, turned out how that how the seam turned out using that thinner yarn like I don't know it's like it's a very thin yarn but um, I don't know even what it's called but I I'm seriously going to consider that on all my projects because instead of using the same yarn um, because you don't see it anyways it's invisible and it, it's it's thinner so it doesn't add to the bulk of your seam um i love it look at that like it's beautiful all right friends so let's put this little baby together and uh see what we come up with okay so this little person is calling so while i play with her um you're going to put the other two panels together with this one so you're going to just attach the next uh the third one and then attach the fourth one the same exact way that you did the first two um and then you'll have this very beautiful simple um blanket almost complete so go ahead and do that and when you're done i'll see you back okay so here's a shot of it all scrunched up 
um, <laughs> because it's the only way I can fit it in my uh, screen. But we've got our one pal here, our second one here. We've got our third one there, and that makes all four panels together. This is the back side, and you know what? These these um seams, like I've showed you already before, are so thin. So it doesn't look bad on the back of a blanket. Like it's excellent. You don't need to have a tube for a blanket. You can do a panel and it looks beautiful. I'm just loving it. It's so great. Um, so anyways, now that we have done that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, crochet around the outside border. Okay. Okay, my friends, I'm gonna insert this little part um, before I show you how to crochet the edge. Um, for those of you who don't um, crochet and don't wanna learn, <laughs> um, you have a nice, beautiful, finished edge to this piece um, that comes off of your machine, so you don't have to do the ha do the single crochet there um, if you don't want to. Um, I, I like to finish my pieces off with, a, with crochet all around and um, I, I like the looks of it, so that's my preference. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do um, in this next section coming up. But if, if you don't crochet, you don't have to um, worry about it. It's gonna just naturally curl in a little bit by itself there um, anyways, and it's gonna look beautiful. And you can um, just skip past this uh, next section if you prefer um, and go right onto the fringe, okay? Um, but if you're like me and you like to have a nice even crocheted border, then you're gonna go ahead and follow this. Also, um, if you prefer to do a crocheted border rather, rather than the fringe that I show you at the end, then you're gonna need this single crochet um, perimeter all around your piece. And then you can choose whatever border you would like to do and continue it um, on, uh, on your blanket here. But I'm not going to do a, a crocheted border. Uh, as such, I'm going to add a fringe. So I just thought I'd pop that on um, for you and you can decide uh, what you would like to do. Okay, see you in the next clip. Okay, so I put a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to just take the piece anywhere. I'm going to go into the corner there. We're going to do a single crochet or we're gonna slip stitch to join just like we did before, chain one. And we're going to single crochet into that same space, which I already did. And then we're gonna just evenly space out. Sorry, I had to uh, shut my video off because I had a little voice calling me. <laughs> She's so sweet. We're gonna just eyeball this and just um, evenly space out our single crochets all along the edge. Okay, just like so. Evenly space it out, making sure that you're not getting too tight. And when you get all the way across and to this corner you're going to put two single crochets in that corner then you're going to go up the side into every second stitch when you can see the stitches here you go into every second stitch okay and then in the corners two single crochets and then you meet up to the other end here we insert our hook into that first single crochet drop a loop slip stitch to join okay i i will show you when i get there but you're going to just single crochet all around the whole perimeter of your piece and when you're done that I will see you back all right so um, on the ends I told you to evenly space it out um, but you'll see from this picture here that um, th those are the slip stitches that we did when we closed off our um, ends uh, that we had our waist yarn on you can go into each one of those those uh, slip stitches but if, if you find that it's getting ripply then um, then make it into every second one. So you want to have a nice smooth edging. You don't want to have it have it in so many stitches that you're getting a ripple effect. You want it to come out nice and smooth. So um, you can try putting it in each stitch along the on on the ends. Um, but if it looks like it's starting to ripple, then do every second stitch. Okay, and and just try to evenly space it out so it looks nice and smooth. All right, so I made it to the end. I'm going to put two single crochets in that corner. You can do three if you like. I've done two throughout the whole pattern and made them loose. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch. If I can get it in there, just like that. Yarn over, cut it off, pull it through, and then I'll hide my tails. Okay, I hid my tails and I started my fringe so you can see, I love it. It's so great. So I 
make my tass my my fringes 12 inches long so what i do is is i they'll, they'll be six inches when they're doubled in half like when they're in half they're six inches but we need a 12 inch um piece of of yarn so what i do you're gonna take your yarn and you're gonna wrap it i wonder if my my um camera's high enough we're gonna wrap it and 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 because sorry you're gonna hear that noise in the back that's my husband outside um and i have the window right by my camera here there we go so this is six inches from here to here but when i wrap it around the back too it becomes 12 inches and i just do one cut so i keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until i get as many as i want on there and it doesn't matter if you cut up here or here or down there wherever all you got to do is make one cut okay the only one that's going to be a different length is that first one that you cut generally turns out a little different so then you take your fringes off and i'm going to wrap more so that i have three different colors wrapped around here so i can choose two different colors to put together but this is a 12 inch fringe just like that okay what we do is we grab two and then we put them in half and it now becomes a six inch fringe okay i'm going to wrap some more so that i have two different colors to put together and then i'll show you how we attach it all right, so as I'm wrapping, just a little hint. You wanna go straight up and down as much as possible, okay? If you go across like this and across like this and all over the place so it's messy, then your lengths are gonna be different, okay? You wanna you want to keep it consistently up and down, just like that, okay? So I have some extra colors here. I'm gonna cut this one off at the base. I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a snip right in there, okay? Then I have a bunch of fringes ready to go. So I'm going to take two fringes, put them together just like that. Oop, that was the end one, of course. Just like that. Fold it in half so it's back to six inches. I'll take my piece here and I'm just gonna... This is this is the edging where, where we did our slip stitches. Um, and then we did our single crochet over, but I'm going into every second one. So with the with the right side facing, I'm gonna skip this one, I'm gonna go into this one. You come up from behind, then you grab your fringe, put it through, yarn over, take it through those loops, because then this little bar is on the right side of your work, just like that. And I always have it so that this, this part is closer to my body instead of got it away from me right now, which is a little awkward, but we'll make it work. You get the idea. So we're gonna take another fringe, put it in half, I'm going to skip a stitch, go into the next one, come from behind, like from the wrong side, up to the right side. Take that loop, put it through the stitch. Then I always actually take my fingers and put it through that loop. Grab all the pieces, pull them through, and pull it tight. So you're going to do that on every second stitch um, along, along the edges there where, okay, our panels are coming. This is where, let me put this back to normal. This is where our panels, this is the length way. So the panel and this was the width. This is that width area of the, the ends of our panels, okay? All right, so I've got it finished. And I just love it. I think it just looks so soft and so beautiful. You know, my friends, this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, it, I, I think it was $7.99 a ball, but I always use my coupon and I, um, or it was actually on sale 25% off. And then as a senior, I got an extra 10%. Um, on a sale item so that takes it down to a really good price for you know and when you need five balls and you make yourself a beautiful throw like this or afghan um, blanket whatever you like to call them <laughs> um, this is a couch throw for me um, <clears throat> then then you realize it's worth the cost that you're you're paying because this yarn is soft and luxurious and absolutely gorgeous and I know you're gonna love it so my fringe is done that's how it looks and it's just beautiful. It starts to flatten out the edge, just beautiful. And then it wraps around. You can see how that edge wraps around and it just automatically curls a little bit and makes a beautiful, it, it's just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, but again, if you choose to not want to do a fringe um, and you wanna do a border all around your piece instead, um, you go ahead and do that. Choose whatever border is your favorite border. Um, if you need some, some inspiration, then click on videos on my channel and look through at my blankets. I've got borders on almost every blanket that I've, other blanket that I have on my channel. Um, and then you can just add your border around the single crochet that you've done on your blanket here and leave off the fringe. And that would be absolutely gorgeous too. Um, but a single layer blanket 
is beautiful. That seam does not take away from it at all. So here is our finished blanket. Um, I love that it's uh, a flat panel because it's not so thick. It's, it's a beautiful summer blanket. Actually, it's all seasonal blanket, but it's just the perfect weight when it's not uh, so cold outside. Um, and it's just a right size to throw over your legs and, and uh, just relax. So uh, I hope you love it. Thanks so much for joining me in this tutorial. Um, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, Really appreciate all of you. Take care, my friends. Talk to you soon.